Hello, I am Dr. Anil Gudi. I am one of the consultants in reproductive medicine and surgery and assisted conception at the Homerton University Hospital, London. Today I'm going to talk to you about a paper which was presented in the ASRM and then published in, Fer in Fertility and Sterility. It looks at the association between FSH dose, the A and the MH level on oocyte quality in a GNH antagonist cycle. Why am I aiming to present this paper? One because there is this huge clash that we have to use high dose treatments. We have to use maximum dose treatments to get maximum number of eggs. You have to push the ovaries very hard to be able to get a large number of oocytes. The larger number of oocytes, the better the pregnancy rates. Yes, the more embryos transferred, the better the pregnancy rates. This was proved a long time ago. Now the question comes up, is that, does that logic still hold? That if you decide to give a huge dose of medication, you will get more eggs. Let us look at what it did. The objective was, they believe that a high FSH dosing impairs follicular numbers and possibly oocyte quality and embryo quality. The hypothesis is that high FSH may be detrimental and on the low and normal AMH. While they believe that it may be necessary to increase the dose of FSH, when in women with high AMH to break the inhibitory response than an effect that AMH has on gonadotrophin receptors. In simple terms is higher the AMH, bigger is the resistance. And I'll keep saying that. Those who come for my teaching and those who work with me will know that I will emphasize on AMH away from the ovarian reserve. I'll emphasize on AMH looking at how it helps us to plan the dose of stimulation, how it tells us that certain protocols may not work. So what did they do? They, they looked at AMH less than 1.8 nanogram per ml, AMH 1.8 to 4.2 nanogram, and AMH greater than 4.2 nanogram per ml. A reasonably good number of cases. Let's look at the oocytes. The dose of less than 225, dose between 225 and less than 450, and that of more than 450. And if you see in AMH less than 1.8, as you increase the dose, the number of oocytes you got was less. The highest number of oocytes you got when the dose was less than 225. AMH again in normal responders, which is normal, again, Oocytes in normal responders were the maximum when you used less than 225. They started dropping as your dose went higher. Except in peace, when AMH was higher, as you gave more FSH, you made more follicles break the FSH threshold. If you look at the metaphase 2 oocytes, as in poor responders, or rather in women with low AMH and women with normal AMH, as you exceeded 225, the number of eggs, metaphase 2 sites, steadily decreased. So if you see from 9.2 to 5.3 in low AMH, as your dose went up, and 12.2 to going down to 7.2 in normal. So it clearly is telling us that the harder you push ovaries, that have a normal to a poor reserve, those ovaries don't respond. Ovaries with high AMH are more likely to recruit a larger number of follicles and larger number of metaphase II follicles. If you look at the available embryos, in low AMH to normal AMH, the number of embryos also steadily started decreasing. Not as much as in between normal and high, but between those which were low, we had less usable embryos. Again, with the AMH was high, you had more usable embryos as your dose went higher. 
completely different to the low and the normal AMH. So what does it tell you? Again, I will I keep hopping on a certain thing. You cannot stimulate more follicles that you can see. This is not magic. Assessive conception and stimulation is logical. Often you'll be able to understand and explain and be able to say why certain follicles are not responding. And often our patients will ask us. You can't give the answer and say, well, it was bad luck, the ovary did not respond, or that sometimes ovaries don't respond. I agree, those are the reasons all of us give. But there is often a reason. There's often a reason which if you turn the pages between FSH, LH, AMH, ovarian volume, have a look at the graph which I present in your courses, and it will tell you that some ovaries will have to be given high doses. Some ovaries will require a more softer approach. That's something which we'll discuss when we go through all the stimulation protocols. Conclusion of this paper that high FSH and gonadotrophin cycles have a negative impact of less oocytes, less embryos, and less metaphase 2 in AMH that is low or normal. On the other hand, in cases of high AMH, the higher dose of FSH seem to make a difference and provide more oocytes, more metaphase 2, and more embryos. Have a think about it again. Have a look at the ovary. Count your antral follicles. Chart them. Look at your AMH. Have a look at the LH. All of these tell you a story. They tell you a story of how stimulation can be successful and how stimulation may fail. Often, you'll be able to troubleshoot them. Thank you very much.